Hi, I'm Glenda Atkinson, the Executive Director of the Paducah Area Chapter of the American Red Cross. Thank you for joining us today. Um, today we're going to be discussing some of the heroes that have been involved with this organization for many years. And I have as my guest today, Barry Smith, uh, who is with Regions Bank by profession and is this year's American Red Cross Heroes Campaign Chairman. And I also have with me today Gretchen Barnett, who is an AmeriCorps service member and is working with us this year in disaster preparedness. And I want to thank both of you for being here to, with us today. Thanks for having Thanks us. Thanks for having us, yes. Um, I saw a slogan the other day, and I have started using this because I think it describes what American Red Cross does. And it says, Red Cross, down the street, across the country, and around the world. And really, that is truly the the area that American Red Cross focuses on. It doesn't matter where in the world a disaster happens. Um, and I appreciate the things that you all are doing to help us this year. And what many people have heard about, of course, is the Haiti response, mm -hmm. the earthquake in Haiti. <clears throat> um, I just received this update this morning that American Red Cross has helped 1.3 million people and um, have been distributing um, supplies such as food, tarps, hygiene kits, water containers, cooking um, items, basic items that help them get through the most urgent, their most urgent mm -hmm. needs to 12,000 people a day. Mm -hmm. um, 25 million liters of safe drinking water have been distributed. Um, and this is the kind of thing that American Red Cross does across the world. And while this has been going on, Red Cross has locally been doing many things in our own community. And Barry, I want to start with you today and, and first of all, tell you how much I appreciate your efforts in working with the Red Cross as this year's Heroes Campaign Chairman. And when we contacted you about this, what was it that um, made you decide that you wanted to work with the Red Cross? Well, I think that uh, if you think about even the things you talked about this morning about the Haiti uh, relief effort and, and the disasters that we have experienced just a year ago with the ice storm and, and I really saw firsthand how the Red Cross stepped up to help people who were in dire need uh, and right here in our own community and so it's not only around the world like you say or down the street but it's it's right here in our community and so I think it's really important that that we as a community come together and make sure that Red Cross is able to do the things that they need to do um, you know it, it's hard for us to imagine quite frankly the Red Cross not being there and not being able to help people like that. We, you know, we think about church organizations, uh, other charitable organizations that step up also, and we're obviously grateful for those, And but they can't do it alone either. And, and the Red Cross seems to me as the, the organization that kind of helps get things going, gets it organized, makes, makes these good things happen throughout our community. So. Uh, when when you approach me about doing it, you know, there's always a concern about how much time and do I have the time to do it, but how can you say no to an organization like the Red Cross? Well, we certainly appreciate the fact that you did not say no. <laughs> we're, we're glad that you are, are helping us out. And, and the concept of the Heroes Campaign is an interesting concept. Whenever you mm -hmm. look at raising funds to provide services, it's an interesting concept, but it is the concept is this. Um, you are right. There are one organization cannot provide the kinds of services to meet all the needs in a community. And so Red Cross works with, with partner agencies throughout the community and, and really across the nation, mm -hmm. across the world. Um, <clears throat> but whenever we are doing this, this disaster response efforts, um, it, it takes human beings to be willing to step up and provide human resources as well as financial resources. Mm -hmm. And what we are, of course, are asking people to do is if they will step up now and be a hero in our community by helping us at least raise funds to provide some resources for different, for different needs in the community. And it can be 
a single family fire. We talk a lot about that, but honestly, that's that's something that happens throughout the year. Uh, mm -hmm. We had had a fire actually in in our area yesterday, and and I could say that almost any any day of the year because mm -hmm. because it doesn't happen every day in our community, but it is a very frequent occurrence. And um, so by asking people, will you now be a hero for your community? And, and uh, Barry, you want to tell us some of the things that, that a, we, we kind of put it at $1,000 just as a, a good goal. And you want to share some of the things that, that you know, the, the different $1,000 can do in the community? Sure. I think when you, when you think about $1,000, and, that, and that's uh, just kind of a nice round number, but, you know, it... It can provide uh, several cots, or when you think back to that ice storm last year and when we had folks housed at the armory and so forth, and, and we had to have a place for them to sleep and to, and to stay. And so it can provide that. It can provide blankets, uh, uh, linens, and clothing for those, those families that are displaced. Uh, all those uh, toiletries, just just the basic necessities of life and so I think it's uh, it's really important and we're asking people to be heroes and it, that doesn't mean Glenda has to write out a check for a thousand dollars but Glenda can be responsible for uh, raising a thousand dollars for the American Red Cross so she may have ten friends that want to give a hundred dollars a piece or or she may want to uh, hold a bake sale and donate right. the profits uh, <coughs> All those kind of things. So that's yeah, really what we're asking people when we when we talk about stepping up to be a hero. Uh, that's the kind of things that we're we're talking about. Well, and Gretchen, I know that mm -hmm. you've had uh, and and if you want to share a little bit with us about what you've done since you've been here with the Red Cross in the area of community education, but you've also worked some client casework. I have. And, and you can kind of share with us what you've done and and what help we've been able to to give. Well. In the position that I'm in, I've, I've had the opportunity to go out and into different classrooms around the community and do presentations on how to be prepared. Um, every grade level, it seems like we've we've touched on all the way, you know, from from the little guys in kindergarten all the way up um, through high school. I've had opportunities to to do presentations um, on a personal in the office um, level. I have assisted with. Um, some of our clients that have come in, single family fires, and um, that thousand dollars, what does it do, you know, here? Um, it can put, you know, a, a new set of clothes for a family of four, shoes, that warm winter coat, um, food for about a week, and then we can put them up in a hotel and, and give them time to gather their thoughts back together and, you know, figure out what are they going to do from here on out and we work with our local agencies around town as well for that extended care you know but we're there for that immediate emergent need um, you know to get them just some breathing time um, to get back in and and just you know get back into life well and I know Gretchen that um, the times that that you've worked with clients I know that you of course I you are a passionate caring person and I've seen your interactions with them but it, it does seem to be one of those situations that, of course, I personally feel blessed to have the opportunity to be able to deliver this service mm. because it really, you really see what a difference you're making in people's lives. And, um, and one thing that I sometimes share with people is that if you imagine leaving your home and whatever you brought to work with you today, mm -hmm or whatever you happen to have in the car with you is all you get to keep. Yeah. Because if you go back to your house and it's not there, maybe it's burned down, you know, certainly there are times where there's major events such as flooding or Hurricane Ike coming through Kentucky or, you know, those other, other things. But that is devastating. It's just mm -hmm. as devastating to a family that's lost everything in a home fire and they find themselves in a situation where they they literally have nothing um, as it would be any other disaster event mm -hmm. and um, it kind of makes a difference doesn't it when it, it, it absolutely firsthand. does it, it <clears throat> continues to amaze me as I go out you know I haven't been with Red Cross very long but um, to learn the whole gamut of what we do 
people don't realize that we're more than just blood, that we do go out into the community and you know, we're as good as our community supports us. Um, so this Heroes campaign is really important for, for the local community. Um, the nation and the world has been great with the Haiti relief, but we've still got stuff going on at home we have to take care of. And so that's what this Heroes campaign is about, is, is taking care of, you know, the people in our own backyard. Um, taking care of our neighbors, taking care of our grandma across town. So Well, and we, of course, we have some health and safety services mm -hmm. and, and really are preparing the community through that as well as the military services. That's right. The, the <laughs> health and safety programs, you know, we offer CPR monthly. Um, we're revamping our wilderness um, training, so that's going to be an awesome opportunity as the weather gets better that we can go out and do that. Um, babysitting, lifeguarding, swimming. There's just a whole gamut, you know, and then the, the support to the armed forces is just an incredible program and, and um, you know, it's co we're congressionally mandated, the only organization that is to do emergency communication between the family to verify that information and to get it to the um, commanding officer of that military service person. So. You know, there's there's just so much involved with Red Cross in, and the in kinds every of, day of, of calls that that come in as far as military calls. Well, it it could be um, that there's been a diagnosis and they're not quite sure, you know, if that family member is going to last very long. Um, could be complications with a pregnancy, even. You know, a birth is natural; it's not an emergency. But you know, complications arise, and and in that situation, you know, we we contact the hospitals or the doctors, or you know, there are times where we have to contact the funeral home. Um, we verify that information, and we get that to our national office. They contact the um, commanding officer. Once he gets that in his hand, that this situation is going on, he sees Red Cross on there. He doesn't have to think, oh, you know, is this for sure going on. He knows that this information has been verified and between in 12 to 24 hours that service member could be coming home. Um, it's not a decision that we at Red Cross make but we help that process along. Right and very well ago you said something about you know you can't imagine our community without Red Cross being there. There are so many services that are going on all the time. It really strengthens the network of all of our nonprofit agencies because we do work together and we do help whether it's Barclay Regional Airport or it may be with working with the health department um, in addressing the needs of special needs sheltering um, and, and just people in our community that have, need special considerations and without that it's not as strong and so right I, and I think <coughs> Gretchen made a great point I, I think Red Cross does so much that people in our community don't realize. Uh, they just, uh, all the things that you, you talked about and you talk about, and I think the more people understand uh, what Red Cross does and, and what they bring to our community, I think it becomes more and more important. Uh, it's hard, sometimes, you know, programs like this hopefully get out the word of some of the good things that, that Red Cross does, and it's you can't really go out and spend tons of money to advertise and say, here's what we do. And so it, it really has to be word of mouth and, and these heroes that we're talking about, that's part of their job really is, is you know, making people to understand how important Red Cross is to our community and all of the, the services and so forth that they bring. Well, and, and to speak a word about the funding, that is another thing like, you know, Gretchen mentioned that about blood. American Red Cross is responsible for about 45 percent of the nation's blood supply, hugely mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. um, of course, we are working with the chapter, which functions, I mean, we basically do everything except the day-to-day -day blood operations. That is pulled out and operates separately because it is biomedical, very lab-oriented, and so the blood center is actually in the Paducah area chapter, it is in a different location, a different building. Mm -hmm. it is together in some places, but not, not here locally. But as far as the funding is concerned, that is something that many people do not understand, that mm -hmm. local services <coughs> are locally funded. Yeah. We do not get any funding from FEMA, from the government. We are an independent agency, mm -hmm. and that is as it should be, because American Red Cross stays away from political issues, Mm -hmm. We are, uh, we do not, it doesn't matter if what country someone's from, nationality, it doesn't matter if they are a person of faith or lack of faith, we are a humanitarian organization and we work 
to help people that are in need, regardless of, of any of the other issues. If they are a person in need, we try to help them. So those local disaster response operations have to be locally funded. And Barry, I know since you've been working with us in our mm -hmm. HEROES Committee, <clears throat> You have several things in the works, and we, over the next month or so, which is, uh, we do this in March each year, um, we will be seeing a lot of different activities going on. Can you tell us about just a few of those? Sure. Um, you know, normally we, we also, we, we try to, uh, we have some people who support us every year, and they're, maybe their company is a hero, or they individually are a hero, and, and so certainly we reach out to those folks every year. but. This year we're going to try to do some different things. I know I think we have a pancake breakfast at the Moose Lodge this year to raise some money. So that that's a and good thing. And when is that? Do you remember? I think it's the, uh, the 20th, 20th of, of March, March, I yeah. believe. Um, you know, uh, our bank at Regions, we are, you know, just some fun. We'll do a dress down day on mm -hmm. a Friday and let, you know, let the employees throw in a couple of bucks to have the ability to dress down that day, you know. Uh, have canisters in our banks and we'll have them at some other locations, some other businesses in Paducah. So if you go in to get your dry cleaning, you can throw a buck in or, you know, uh, just something to kind of raise the attention and the, and the awareness of, of Red Cross and what's going on. I know, uh, and there are a lot of other things, a lot of our heroes are planning other little things that to raise money and, and to uh, raise awareness, really. And so the funding is is really important. You know, we we need dollars to to make good things happen. And uh, so, you know, we really ask people. I know it's it's a hard time for a lot of folks and for a lot of businesses. And uh, but our people in McCracken County and and Paducah in general have always really stepped up to the plate, and they understand that. Uh, we're helping our neighbors, and uh, that's that's a good thing. Well, and there's some some uh, things that I know, Gretchen. You can you can tell us about some things um, that are going on with the school and and Badget Playhouse and a few of those other events that are going on that you're helping us work yeah. with. Um, the most upcoming is is the Badget Playhouse. Um, they're doing their Pansy Klein show there, and and um, we're going to. Uh, receive the profits from the concessions on that and they're going to also um, every time the show is open this month they're going to have the buckets out and where you can make donations into that. Um, I'm going to go out into the school systems and contact the elementary schools and see if we can get some maybe county or city-wide competitions going on on what classroom can raise the most and it's amazing um, how you know bringing all these pennies and the coins in um, what that turns into dollar wise for us. Um, you know, Red Cross is all about donor intent as far as their fundraising. So um, we are the Paducah area chapter, but we service Livingston, McCracken, and Ballard counties. So, you know, even the donations specifically that come into the Paducah area chapter um, can be designated or stay in the, the service area where they are. So let's say, for instance, that Livingston County has a fundraiser out there. The, Ballard, yeah. you know, has, has a fundraiser in, in, down in their community. You know, that stays with them, you know, in four instances. And I believe Badgett Playhouse is doing that, correct? Uh -huh. For the Livingston County. That's right. That's right, they are. So, um, you know, there's just a whole gamut of things that can be done. Uh, Barry was talking about how they can have a dress down day. We recently had a school that had a fundraiser for Haiti, but this could go on, you know, for the heroes where, um, if they wanted to have a crazy hair day, the, the students had to pay a quarter to wear crazy hair day, but the teachers had to pay five dollars to have crazy well, hair day, <laughs> and um, or crazy hat day, or wear your clothes inside out day. I mean, there's just a, you know, it, we're only limited by our imaginations, and so um, you know, the pancake breakfasts, the mm -hmm. car washes. I mean, with all the salt around, you know, let's get mm -hmm. some car washes going and raise some money. So, um, and it's all about you know that thousand dollars. And it can be a corporation, it can be an individual, it could be a group of people. Um, and speaking of groups, with this um, social media aspect that we have going on in our society now, the online fundraising through emails and through you know your Facebook site is a great opportunity um, to to quickly raise that thousand dollars within you know a team. And, and, I, and Glenda, you know we have a, a great group of volunteers who've really 
are out there trying to trying to do the good thing. A committee that you know has uh, taken on this task, and uh, you know those folks are all volunteers. They're not getting paid anything, obviously, and and uh, so it it's uh, it's exciting to to hear what what they dream up and what they want to do, and and how they're uh, encouraged and uh, enlightened about Red Cross. Right, and I know we have, um, there's a group from Paducah Bank that mm -hmm. will be um, doing some fundraising. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a number of restaurants, Mother Duncan's, Buckets, yeah. uh, IHOP. There are a number of, of organizations in the area that are, are stepping up and they're going to help raise funds. But you know, you mentioned that about volunteering. Whether it is volunteering to, um, to raise the financial support that is needed to deliver these services or people that are willing to step up and and go out themselves. Mm -hmm. It really takes an effort to to help other people that are in need. And that's one thing that um, that is so moving to me. I'll give you an example and, and I told a group of people j this just the other day. Whenever um, recently we had a situation where we were having a storm that was coming in mm -hmm. and the director of emergency management asked that we have a shelter on standby. Sounds like a simple thing, but in reality, it took a lot of time mm -hmm. loading up cots, going over there, unloading the cots, setting up a shelter. We had volunteers from our chapter that went and got out of their cozy warm bed and went and slept on a cot yeah. to make sure that this, you know, that we were prepared to help this this community in times of need. And we have a, a video clip that I want to end the, today's show with mm -hmm. that shows, um, it, it's really a tribute to the heroes of American Red Cross. And it shows people going out and delivering services to those people that are in need. And, and uh, it is very moving. And so whether it is someone stepping up and saying, hey, I'll have a bake sale, and I'll raise a little bit of money, or maybe I'll dress down at work today, or maybe I'll have a crazy hair day. The ultimate result is that they can be a hero for that person. And, and you know, when you've lost everything, to have someone that is kind, they put a blanket around your shoulders and give you a mm -hmm. hot cup of coffee and say, you know, I may not be able to fix this for you, but I can get you in a hotel tonight, and I can make sure that, it, that your child has a pair of shoes and at least a new outfit and groceries for a few days and we're here yeah. to help you out. It yeah. truly does make a difference. So let's take a few minutes and, and watch this video. And, and again, Barry, thank you so much for your time and for your help in this, in this campaign and Gretchen, all that you've done already with us this year and, and uh, helping us out. And it's very much appreciated. Thanks so much. Thank and you. thank you, you for being with Thanks us. Thanks for having us.